，每个理想都有实现的可能。四年来，小盈科技以智慧金融助力一千八百万人逐梦前行。小盈科技，给理想前行的力量。这是一面由十一点二万块乐高积木颗粒拼砌而成的马赛克墙，墙中的这只熊猫呢，是首届中国国际进口博览会的吉祥物进宝。进博会期间，这里成为了进博会的一个网红打卡地，前来拍照的人、参观的人络绎不绝。在进口博览会的日用消费品展区，乐高是人气最旺的展位之一。除了《哈利波特》、漫威《超级英雄》、《侏罗纪公园》等一系列超级 IP 的周边积木。乐高还发布了其全球首发的新品，两套以中国传统农历新年为灵感来源的玩具套装。在这套充满浓郁中国味的产品背后，是乐高发力中国市场的雄心。从财报数据来看，二零一八年上半年，乐高在欧美成熟市场的表现平平，但是在中国市场却取得了两位数的收入增长，保持了强劲的增长势头。开放的商业环境以及不断涌现的中产阶级家庭，让中国成为乐高的热土。中国已经成为这家玩具制造巨头最为看重的市场。从1983年正式向中国市场销售产品以来，乐高已经在中国的十六个城市开设了四十七家乐高零售店。预计到二零一九年底，这个数字将扩张到三十个城市和一百四十家零售店。未来，乐高将着力深耕二三线城市市场。中国的玩具市场的潜力到底有多大？进博会究竟为乐高带来了什么？在进博会的展馆里，乐高集团首席执行官倪志伟接受了财新时间的专访，让我们来听听他的看法。We say today LEGO has a quite large booth, and many many displays, and also new products will be released today. So can you briefly introduce what's the characteristic of this booth today? What's the special design you want to deliver to the consumer and audience? It's a real privilege for us to have been invited to be uh, to be part of this. It's, it's, an, it's a good opportunity to be able to to show a lot of the new things. So we are showing on on the booth here uh, a lot of new products. Uh, we are showing especially products around uh, steam, so science and technology, engineering and mathematics. So things that can actually be used in school uh, for 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 help actually teaching kids in a creative way, in a fun way, uh, where they learn through play. Uh, so we're showing some of those products. We're showing some of the uh, sustainability products. We have uh, what we call plants for plants. So some of our products are now based on sustainable materials, where we use plant-based materials for that. So we try to use the booth to show a lot of different things. Well, what's your um, expectation yes. for joining this event? It's an opportunity, I think, for us to uh, to, to to showcase what what we have. Also, a building brand. Of course, the awareness in China of the Lego brand. We would like to make even stronger, and uh, and I think this is an, a, a good opportunity to uh, to show that, and, and also show how we can contribute, also to launch some 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 new things. Chinese market right now is the biggest con uh, market for the uh, toy product, product, and second largest country of sales. Yes. But and we actually don't have our own domestic global brand for the toys industries. So what's the potential of the Chinese? Toy companies, you from your perspective. Yeah, no, I think it's. Uh, I mean, the toy market in China is, of course, interesting. It's a, it's a huge market. There's a lot of kids, and there's a lot of a lot of families growing their their income, uh, and there's a lot of parents here. When we measure that, that uh, are really interested in their people, in their kids, in their children's education and development, uh, much more actually than in most countries. And 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 93% of Chinese parents actually say that they believe play is a really important part. But we also see that Chinese kids, they have more time in school, they have more time in after school, they actually have more homework, so it's not a lot of time for play. 
so, so the feeling is that also in China, the, the Chinese parents really want to make sure that when the kids play, they play something that develops them, where they learn something, and that fits very well to, uh, to, to the Lego brand. And, and, and maybe that's, uh, that's also one of the reasons that, uh, that the focus in China is very much on these kind of products, and more than we see in other, in other markets, that entire construction toy is much more important in China because the understanding of engineering and mathematics and is just higher and, and, and parents actually like that better. So that is a change, that's a difference in China relative to the rest of the world. That fits well to, I think, the, the, the Lego brand. Now there are a lot of, a lot of global uh, toy manufacturers in China, a lot of local manufacturers, and I think that's a, that's a good situation. And many of these are, are also uh, growing and, uh, and I would also expect that one day you see some of them become more global in what they do. 全球的玩具市场陷入低迷，增长放缓。全球最大的玩具零售商玩具反斗城，在经营了近七十年后，去年申请了破产保护，并在今年的六月底关闭了在美国的所有店面。与此同时，全球最大的玩具制造商之一乐高却在加速扩张。在今年上半年的全球财报会上，乐高集团 CEO 尼志伟表示，整体来看，乐高集团的业绩已经趋于稳定，不再下滑。除了加速开发中国市场，乐高还会持续在创新体验和渠道拓展上投入资金。在创新体验上，乐高近年来不断地推出智能化产品。如今，小朋友们可以通过应用程序对 Boost 五合一智能机器人和智能火车产品进行编程和遥控。此外，乐高与腾讯视频合作推出的动画节目专区《乐高视频》已经在今年五月发布，与腾讯游戏共同打造的沙盒游戏《乐高无限》也即将上线。在四十年的发展中，乐高如何做到持续的创新研发？作为一家传统玩具制造商，乐高数字化转型的背后又有什么样的故事呢 ？Let's talk about more about the toy market. Um, as we say, Lego, you know, is a very uh, famous and classic uh, toy company. That we can say, in a global scale, actually the uh, toy market is in a market downturn. And last year, we also see the Lego revenues has uh, declined. So, what's your observation for this whole, you know, industry general trade and future growth? Well, well it's true that uh, that uh, the toy market has had a couple of years with with less growth. We've also seen. Companies like Toys R Us going out of business uh, throughout the year. Uh, for us, we actually, uh, just after a couple of difficult years, I think this year is about stabilization and we are on track to do that. And, uh, and we're starting to invest behind getting future growth. So, uh, so I'm quite optimistic of the development of, of Lego uh, in this environment. And in particular in, in China, of course, the toy market has been growing. So even last year, the toy market grew like 16% in China. and, uh, and uh, we're actually very satisfied with our performance here in China and how we develop and how we get the brand out to many more kids. So, uh, so I'm optimistic about uh, where it's going and, uh, and uh, we're really uh, trying to, to get the fundamentals right and start to invest behind even more innovation and more creativity. So, so I'm optimistic on our behavior. Okay, so what's your uh, I mean, detailed strategy to achieve that growth? You know, the traditional toy market actually is uh, challenged by the digital, the internet, uh, internet and uh, such a new technology. We know you had a pretty successful experience to bring a downfall, transform themselves from a very uh, traditional industrial company to a technology advanced company. What's the special strategy you designed for Lego? Yeah, it's, uh, no, that's true. and. Uh, and also digital for Lego is a, is a big opportunity and uh, when we research kids around the world it actually shows that yes they like to play in a digital fashion but they also like to play physical and it's very important that they play physical so even kids do not think about today I want to play in a digital way and tomorrow in a physical they just play it's all the same we call it fluid play so we blend digital and physical and because we are so strong on the brick and the en on endless uh, creativity around the brick so for instance a three-year-old can play with a, with a Duplo train and can start the train and then control it from the iPad. Or, or with Boost, you can actually learn how to code and program in a simple fashion and then your, your product or your, what you build physically can start to behave and you can control it. Uh, also, we do video games where, of course, it's more digital, but the story is the same. So the story you play out over in the role play is the story you, you see again in the, in the video game with the Lego figures and so. So kind of 
trying to uh, have them spread across the two platforms. That's where we think we can really add something and, and, and be different. For the contemporary social, young people too focus on their um, digital devices. Yeah. Actually, uh, maybe bring some negative effect. So what's the observation from the local? Yeah, it, but it's absolutely, uh, it's absolutely true. Uh, we, we have the parents are somehow ambassadors for Lego because they would like their kids to play in both ways yeah. and also to have them play physical and, and, and enjoy the fun and creativity coming out of that. It actually is the case that playing with the, with the Lego system and play, you actually develop five really key skills for the, uh, for the kids for the future. So, uh, so these 21st century skills around problem solving, creativity, collaboration or social skills or emotional skills, you actually you learn them by playing this way and, and parents know that and they would like the kids to do so. I think what we can bring is really this combination of digital and physical and, uh, and I often have parents call me or write me and say, oh I'm so happy my son or daughter just played around for two days physically and they totally forgot about the iPad. And I think that's what Lego can do. That's what we can bring to, to the world, but, but we need to be relevant for the kids. And that's where uh, c combining the two things, having the iPad, uh, having games, augmented reality is one of the ways that if you build something physically, we can enhance that experience if you, if you can uh, use augmented reality. And, 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 and that's what we would like to do, but we are very based on the physical brick. That is so unique. That yeah. system is so innovative and everybody likes it. So, so we try to build off that. What's the future plan? I mean, I'm the future Lego's uh, blueprint. There will be more a field, a business to add. For example, the kids education, school, and maybe exhibitions or another, yeah. anything. That playing with Lego is a, is a way of learning through play. And, and this, this playful learning obviously can be used in schools. Why does it have to be boring to be at school? Yeah. Why do we not use these kind of same principles? That's also why the entire Lego education is around supporting teachers in schools to actually teach the kids some of these creative skills, problem solving skills, but in a fun way. And they can uh, teach in a more, in a more uh, creative and engaging way. And, and we know kids like it. Uh, even in China alone, 30,000 children have already been exposed to that and really, really enjoy that. And we can actually prove how they learn faster. It's interesting when we ask, 93% of all kids say that it's, uh, they learn much better if it's also fun. So they remember it better, they participate more, instead of just sitting down and being told something, now they're engaged and, uh, and we want to do more of that because we think that's quite unique and we can, we can add to that. I heard about um, LEGO actually spend many budget on innovations and research and the products. We actually believe that the platform for innovation is the Lego system in play. It's quite unique, the fact that you can take the bricks, you can put them together, you can, there's a clutch power, but you can also take them apart again and change. And this is very, very key to what we, what we do. On that, of course, with the minifigures, we allow role play in all kinds of situations. And now with, with the Mindstorms and Boost, you, are, you can actually program some of it. You bring the digital into that. We believe that's the platform. Off that platform, we can do products that are really interesting for adults kind of advanced cars or big things with, with, uh, uh, with motors and whatever. And we can also do for simple things for kids where you can actually learn your first construction things and you can be interested in engineering or whatever. So we believe that the, the foundation is the same, but the innovation needs to happen every year. So, so actually every year, 60% of our products are new. They're all built off the same platform, but they're new. So we can be innovative and relevant and so it's not the same products we sell this year as last year or the year before. And not many companies can renew their product line with 60% every year. And that's because the platform is stable. And we have this platform for innovation and then we innovate. And the combination, and sometimes it's more digital, sometimes it's more physical, the platform allows for, for, for doing that. Okay, so we know there is a, a big challenge for LEGO to beat I mean, uh, the lo low cost counterfeits. So what company actually do? Something that we are, we are of course trying to address in different ways. I think the key way is really to build our brand and to build the knowledge of, of uh, at least, yes. And, but also that the, the uh, we are very focused on quality. We are very focused on safety. So we, in our factories, we have a lot of tests. We actually have nine different very rigid tests that we perform the material, right? on the material and on so so if you have a two-year-old 
uh, daughter playing with Duplo, you don't want the arm to fall off the uh, that they swallow something. So we're very, very keen on quality and on safety. And of course, there is a cost to that. But that's what we believe that, that, that parents are actually looking for. So we want to make sure, of course, that nobody buys something and gets misled by the fact that they think it's Lego, but it's not Lego. And the safety and quality is not there. So we are we are working hard to get the brand out and the understanding of the quality and safety that we bring. I think that's one element. So people know if they buy real Lego, then uh, then this is what this is what you get uh, around that. Then of course we are also trying to uh, protect our rights in terms of intellectual property rights. And uh, I was very happy actually yesterday to hear also President Xi again yeah. talk to the uh, to the importance of having. Environment where also multinationals can be protected on their intellectual property rights, and uh, and uh, actually yesterday I don't know if you know, but we actually won a significant case against one of the copycats or a counterfeit production that they are they have to immediately stop doing that, and that's I think it's important that the combination of building brand, being innovative, and providing good products, but also protecting our rights. I think that's that's the um, that's the way we would want to go forward. And, and, Ni Zhiwei 在去年十月才刚刚就任乐高集团的 CEO。这位五十二岁的丹麦人被乐高集团寄予厚望。他拥有着多年的管理经验，一开始是麦肯锡的管理顾问，在三十四岁时就成为了全球知名的耳麦制造商 GM Netcom 的 CEO。二零零四年，他加入丹麦最大工业集团之一的丹佛斯集团，两年后升任 CEO。在他掌舵期间，丹佛斯从一个传统的工业公司转变成为科技业的领先者，公司体量翻倍，营收增加了百分之五十。这位创造过惊人业绩的管理者，为何会在去年加入乐高集团？他又对乐高集团的未来有什么样的期许呢 ？How about yourself? Are you a good player? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm right now. I'm building the Bugatti, which is a the Lego Bugatti, which is it's a, it's a quite difficult build. Uh, so.、Uh, But I, I like it a lot. I, I've been I've been building with Lego since I was a child, and、uh, so、uh, I've always enjoyed it a lot. I have some questions for you, for your personal experience.、Um, uh, we know you have become the Lego CEO last year. Yes.、Well, what's your what actually motivate you to take this position? Yeah, yeah. It's a, I've always I have always thought that Lego is an awesome company. It's a, it's a very it's a very strong brand. It's actually it's the It's the second most reputable brand in the world, so uh, so it's uh, I, I've always felt very strongly for that, and I think the、uh, having played with Lego also, it's like it's always been close to my heart in a way.、Uh, so so just I think for that alone, I, w- I was、uh, very interested. Then again, if you look at Lego, it's、uh, it's an opportunity to get out and and actually impact children all over the world. So this、uh, allowing the kids to learn the 21st century skills. I think that that just—I mean—it touches it touches me in a different way. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, it, it's really a mission that I can get behind, and、uh, and it's nice to go to work every day, doing something you would really like to do,、uh, and 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 that's what I do. So it was not a, it was not difficult for me to decide to to do this.、Um, before you actually、uh, officially join Lego, you have、uh, have twenty five years. Uh, business management experience. So, how actually、uh, can you adapt yourself, working styles, and uh, uh, such experience with the local cultures? Yeah. No, it's a, uh, it's a,、uh, it's always good with different experience. I think, and you you said it before. I've been working a lot with digitalization and new technologies. I think that that fits very well to some of the things we want to do、uh, in Lego. I have been working a lot. In China, over time, and have a lot of experience. Been here very often, so I think also there. Hopefully, I can bring that experience to the table also here in Lego that we can that we can do even even more and even even faster. So, so from that point of view, I think there's a lot of things I can I can bring in、uh, and, and and add to. And,、uh, and in that sense, yeah, companies are different, but companies are also similar、uh, in ways. And、uh, I think that's a very good fit here in、uh, in how that works.、Mm-hmm. Uh, the last questions. Let let's do、um, imagination. I know this year is just the beginning of your journey at Legos, but let's imagine if today is your last day in Lego, you may be going to another positions, another journeys. What you have bring to Lego? What achievement you have made for Lego? No, I hope that day will be far out in the future. Yeah, 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 But yeah, if we、exactly. imagine that day one day, then I, then I really、day. hope that I am able to give, to give on 
a Lego with a very strong brand, a Lego that has reached markets around the globe uh, with, innovative, uh, with innovative products that allow them to, uh, to be creative and learn through that and, and, and get the brand further out and, and really allowed our, our, many, our many employees around the globe to be, to be creative and to be empowered to do what it actually takes to carry this out and uh, that, that would be my wish.